Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 311 Griffin YouTube channel. We are talking about reading the manual today for DCS. And uh, that's good advice. Reading the manual is a good thing to do. And uh, I don't want to take away from that. But I'm talking about uh, today specifically, we're going to talk about why that's not always the best advice or when it's not the best advice and why that may be. And uh, so I would encourage you to read your manuals or at least kind of skim through them and find the parts that are applicable to your gaming or simming experience and uh, and go ahead and study those parts in the order that makes sense to you. Um, we're going to talk in detail about all this stuff. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. But the reason behind this, and I'm not just talking to new players, although this is applicable to new players, but also old players, people who might receive or get advice on the forums regarding various DCS modules. If you are new and you're asking questions in various forums, be ready because somebody's going to tell you to read the fabulous manual. And that's all they're going to tell you. And I would encourage those of you who are out there giving advice to um, think about it. And if that's the only piece of advice you're going to give, just skip it and go to a different post, go to a different thread. Uh, don't say anything because if you just say, read the fabulous manual, you're, you're kind of being counterproductive to the community. I'll explain why. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the manual real quick. Typically, you get these manuals or you can access them in your hard drive where you have DCS stored, in the DCS root folder, in the uh, mods folder, aircraft, the module of your choice dock folder. That's where you can find them on your computer. I usually access these online because usually whenever I'm reading a manual for DCS, I'm, it's while I'm traveling. I'm on a plane uh, traveling for business or um, I'm waiting for a meeting to start at work or, you know, something. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm at a, one of my kids' ball games and it hasn't started yet and I'm, you know, I'm waiting the 15 minutes for the game to start or whatever. I might peruse a manual um, or something else. Um, so I usually just Google them and you can find them in various places, usually on the Eagle Dynamics forums. But uh, these manuals are interesting. Uh, there's a lot in them, um, but they are very useful. They, um, at least the ones that I've looked at, they can be extremely useful. My brain doesn't learn this way, however, and a lot of you are in similar boat to me. Um, it helps but I have to see something done visually and then I have to do it myself to really get it. So I can read through some of this stuff that's fairly simple in the manual and it works just fine. I, I you know, I, I get it, but usually I have to see it done or, and or do it myself. So whenever you tell somebody to read the manual, keep in mind that they may have already done that and they may have just not, that part just didn't click with them or they forgot it or they weren't ready for it when they read that part of the manual. And we're going to talk about that in a little more detail here in a minute. But let's let's look at this manual real quick. Um, because, like, this stuff is interesting. Okay, the history of the A-10, where it came from, the competition, how it's made, the design principles, uh, walking around it, looking at the missions, operational use, all this kind of stuff. I knew this kind of stuff in fifth grade, like most of the stuff in this section and not all of us did. I'm not trying to brag, but, um, you know, I was interested in this stuff at a very early age and I know a lot of people out in the community were as well. Um, I'm not upset that it's in the manual. I'm actually happy it's in the manual and I like looking through it to get some more information. But like, I think the first page that I actually started finding kind of helpful was this. So this is page 42, and I mean, I don't need to know this stuff to, to play the game, and don't get mad at me for calling it a game. Uh, I know it's a sim to some people, but it's it's both. Um, you know, th this is the first page where I was kind of like, okay, I don't need to know any of this, but it's kind of interesting. You get into a lot of this stuff, I don't really need to know most of this stuff. Some of it's helpful and interesting. Um Right here, this is the first section that I really started studying. And this was just to familiarize myself with the names of the weapons and what they were and how to 
you know, how, how they operated so that when I got in the cockpit, I kind of knew how these things were normally delivered. But even that, you don't really have to know that much about it. So right here, this is the first section. Page 88 is really the first section that you need to know that you need to start studying. And you can learn all this stuff in the game. You don't really need to look through the manual. This is extremely important. And I made my own chart for the A-10 and studied it. I memorized it. I've forgotten a lot of it that I don't use very much, but I memorized it. Uh, so anyway, like there's a lot of interesting stuff here, but you don't have to read the manual to play the game or fly the sim. It depends on, it depends on how you learn. Okay, so the manual is a resource. The in-game tutorials, if they've made them, is a resource. Getting your hands on it and getting dirty and playing the game is a resource. And then various things on the internet are the resource is a resource. So um, Facebook communities, the Eagle Dynamics forums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, uh, and there's an order that each of us learns best. A lot of people, at least most people, I would say, can't just read the manual and get it. They're going to have to do other things. Now, when you say to someone, read the fabulous manual, I know that you're not saying like, that's all you're going to need to do. Okay. So I, I don't want to take away from the fact that yes, the manual has a lot of good information. And just because you don't necessarily have it click with you. It doesn't mean that that was bad advice. You know, that that's not bad advice. I'm just saying that if you're if you're being aggressive about it and you're saying, hey, just read the manual, um, you're pushing people away. And that's why it's counterproductive. You have to acknowledge or you have to understand that there are other ways that people learn and that sometimes it doesn't click. Or it doesn't click immediately or they just they don't know what they don't know yet. And if you don't know that what you don't know, you don't even know the right questions to ask. So I made this chart and this is an oversimplified chart, way oversimplified. And I actually kind of forgot some arrows as well. So it's not even complete. But this is just one what seems like a relatively simple task, how to execute targets with a Maverick and an A-10. OK, and we have to get from the top left part of this chart to the top, uh, the bottom right. We have to fire the Maverick. Now you could just get to the bottom, but essentially we're trying to fire the Maverick in a hands-on situation where we're actually flying, uh, the plane and we are actually firing the Maverick. So how do you, how do you do that? Well, a couple things. First of all, each one of these colored columns represents a way that we can learn that particular step. And like I said, some of us learn in one column better than the others. And some of us do not learn very well in one of the columns compared to the others. The other thing is you will encounter these steps in different orders depending on where you go to get the information. And you can learn them in different steps. You know, I think I probably was introduced to how to access the Maverick in the A-10 before I was introduced to step one here, what are sensors? I didn't know that the Maverick was a sensor even. I, I hadn't even thought that far ahead and I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, so, and, and I did with the original A-10, that manual I had pulled up was the A-10C-2 uh, tank killer manual. The original A-10C Warthog manual is a lot longer than that one. And I made it something like 500 pages through the A-10C Warthog manual and I didn't read the entire manual. Um, but I'd been through a lot of it and I was still struggling with some of these steps, but essentially you can come in and you can access the manual in game tutorials or the internet to figure out what the sensors are. If you know that you need to ask that question, you can, f you can have it answered and then you can step down to what is the targeting pod and, um, uh, in game tutorials can help here too. See, I left, I left that out. It should be there probably cause you can learn what the targeting pod is. What is the Maverick? You get to where, what are the controls and really the internet can only help a little bit. You pretty much have to get your hands on to at least figure out what your key mappings and key bindings are. And then you need to use the internet and you could use the other resources a little bit, I think, um, to figure out what does what. Obviously the manual had those charts. So it depends on what we're talking about when we're figuring out the controls. I, I technically left a step off here. There's what are your key bindings 
and then what do the different key bindings do and the manual does have that uh, in it um, and and you just have to step through this and you can get from uh, from one column to another in some steps and you can jump back from column to column depending on what step you're on and you can do them in different orders and anyway this uh, this is meant to illustrate that there are multiple ways to get to the end result and the path that you take is probably reliant on what you know at the time which in, in what order the steps uh, get introduced to you and what kind of resources you're aware of and things like that so for me personally um, I went through in-game tutorials some of it sunk in some of it didn't I went to the manual and read a, a crap ton of the manual went back to in-game tutorials did just straight up hands-on and I jumped around in those and got to a point where I just didn't really know what I was missing and I went to the forums and got some answers and I some of the answers I got were read the fabulous manual and that was not helpful to me whatsoever but just understand if you're new it's going to take some time uh, the manual is a great resource I hope you can find it if you couldn't before I hope you can now and the in-game tutorials if they are there will help um, Practice it hands-on. Um, also, don't be afraid to ask questions on the internet. Um, obviously, try your best to find the answer yourself, but if you just don't know what you're missing, you're going to have to ask somebody, and that's okay. And if you run across somebody that just says, read the fabulous manual and doesn't offer anything in addition to that, just kind of skip that and, and wait for the other folks to answer um, or, or maybe rephrase it and say, look, I've, I've been perusing the manual. I've been watching YouTube tutorials. I have tried it in the in-game tutorials. I'm missing something here. I need some help. Um, for those of you that give that kind of advice, I would just encourage you to, for sure, encourage people to read the manual, but say, hey, it's in the manual. Also, here's a really short synopsis of what the answer is. And if you can't do that, I would encourage you just to kind of skip it because we all know that there's a manual. Um, if, if somebody doesn't know there's a manual, point them to the manual for sure. But... Um, you know, but but please don't just jump on people because as a community, we need more players. This is a niche community. We need more players. We need a larger community. So when we have genuinely interested people jumping on board, we don't need to be like pushing them away by saying like, you didn't read the manual, idiot. You know, if you would have read the manual, it would have answered all your questions. No, it won't. It will not answer all of your questions and it will not make it so that you can fly the sim. Okay. The manual is an outstanding resource and you should go through it and look at it. I'm just trying to say that people learn differently. Um, I think I've made my point. Uh, I hope that this is helpful, and I hope that this is taken in light, in, in the correct light that I'm intending it, which is, like, I just want to be helpful to people. So I hope that you find this encouraging if you're a new player to know that this is going to be tough. This is going to be, there's a lot here. It's very complex. DCS is very complex. A lot of procedures to learn. Um, but you can do it. You can ask for help. There are helpful people in the community. If you're uh, a person in the community who likes to be helpful, thank you. Um, I very much appreciate it. I have learned so much from the community and very helpful people who I know answered the questions that I was asking over and over and over and over again. I know they have. Um, and those of you that are the Read the Fabulous Manual people... Uh, again, I just encourage you to take a step back. Remember that you were trying to learn once upon a time too, that we all learn differently. And, uh, and sometimes we need a little additional help instead of just reading the manual. So thank you for watching. Happy flying and uh, take care.